Good morning. Many of you I got to see on this week, and that's always good when we don't just see and talk to one another one day of the week, but that we get to continue our relationships and our bond and our family throughout the week. Today I'm reflecting on unsung heroes, unsung heroes. I'm coming upon an anniversary where I started with you all. I think I'm at five years. It doesn't seem like that long. But I remember when I first got here, I learned that someone had donated tickets to our congregation so that we could go and watch a movie. And very short thereafter, hidden figures came out. And many of us went and we went to see this movie. And just in case you guys don't remember what Hidden Figures was about, but it, it was the story of these uh, uh, brilliant uh, female African-American mathematicians um, working at NASA in one of the greatest uh, operations in US history. And they were like these human computers. They could just add numbers up. And that was before, you know, kind of like calculators. <laughs> But I recall many of us leaving the theater wondering why we had never heard of these women. I guess hence the title, Hidden Figures. Well, we made our way back to the church and we were joined up with some people who had already gone to see the movie and we sat in a big circle. And we began to talk about the movie and have a discussion. And I remember amongst us at that point was Joe Yokely and Jesse Bradford. And Joe began to share his journey and his struggle at O'Hare Airport and the role he fulfilled. And then Jesse Bradford began to share that as a businessman, when he first started out, he had to use actually a white male for people to think that that was the person that was the owner of the company so that his business could succeed because they just couldn't imagine that a black man could be in charge of this. And as we listened to Joe and Jesse, I know many of us felt like here amongst us were hidden, hidden figures Amongst us were unsung heroes. We often know the big names. We know when the big funerals come and we have three or four funerals and loads of Cadillacs for the big people, the celebrities. We know the Kennedys and the Martin Luther Kings and the Marilyn Monroes and the Tupacs and the McCains and the Prince and the Whitney Houstons. Don't ask me where I came up from this, but I was a little bit desperate. But do we, I wanna ask you know, well Crowther, how many of you know that name, Well Crowther? You see, Well, he was 24 years old, just out of college, had majored in economics, and he was working in the World Trade Center when 9-11 happened. He was on the 104th floor when the plane hit his building. When he made it down to the 78th floor, which was like the sky deck, he stopped. He became a hero to strangers as the men known to have the red bandana on, amid the smoke and the chaos and the debris and people not being able to see each other, people feeling disoriented, he risked his own life. And in the haze, he guided people. He put one lady on his back and then he guided them to the stairway and encouraged them to help others who needed help. And with that pack, he guided them down, bringing them all the way down to safety. And then he, entered back in and went back to help more. Lynn Young told CNN he was her guardian angel because she really didn't know what she was going to do. I'd like to think of him as an unsung hero. Crowther's body was found in March 2002 among firefighters. He never made it out alive. The truth is many of us who are here today are unsung heroes who have impacted other people's lives. Many of us are here today because of unsung heroes. When we were at camp just a month ago, I encouraged people that gathered there to write on a piece of paper people who had shaped their lives, who had impacted them, and we made a scroll of people who would help us to get to where we are today because the truth is none of us are an island to ourselves. People have helped us get there. People have spoken into our lives. And as the gospel song says, somebody prayed for me. Somebody kept me on their mind. Somebody took the time to pray for me. Somebody deposited it into us so that we could be where we are today. Two weeks ago, 
I called the mulch company because I've really got this grant on my mind and this landscape and the fact that we said we do certain things with our lawn. Anyway, I don't know too much about lawns. And so I try to get guidance and listen to gardeners. And I consulted with a gardener and she had told me what to do and how to measure. And so I got on the phone with the mulch company and I said, I'm going to need about 20 cubic yards of mulch. And he said, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> tell me what you're trying to do. <laughs> so after I talked to him and I explained and I gave him the measurements, he was like, no, I think you're going to just need two to three cubic yards of mulch. Well, thank the Jesus. Could you imagine if he hadn't asked me any questions, what 23 cubic yards of mulch would have looked like? So we started talking and I was like, we need you to bring it here. We'll pay for you to bring it. And he was like, well, where do you want me to dump in it? And at that point, I began to use my imagination. Well, you can't dump it on 53rd Street. And he was like, well, do you have a parking lot? And I thought about the parking lot people who we seem to irritate without even trying. And I was like, oh, heck no, we cannot dump it in the parking lot. So when it became evident that we were not going to be able to get this two to three cubic feet of mulch, we came up with another idea, and that's that we would have to pick it up ourselves. Well, no one car could hold it. So I began to think of unsung heroes. Well, Mary Lynn volunteered her car and Alvin, maybe they would say they didn't volunteer, they were encouraged. Alvin volunteered his car. <laughs> and then we drove over and we had one other person, Pam, to volunteer her car. And so when we got over there, we had three cars. And amazingly, we piled in 28 bags of mulch and six bags of compost and it was exciting we didn't even have to make a second trip well I couldn't have done that all by myself and I'm amazed that I'm reminded here at United that often we can't live this life and lived our Christian faith all by ourselves but together we can do much there's so many unsung heroes in our congregation I think God was just trying to remind me that a bunch of unsung heroes can do a lot together. People whose names may not be big or not popular or not cause us to shut down freeways, but they are important. Unsung heroes is what makes our society the society it is. No one may notice unsung heroes, but they are important. They are important to the kingdom of God. This is where we enter the biblical text today. Jesus is talking about what again? He's talking about dying. Well, he was talking about dying last week, and he's talking about dying again today. And the disciples are still like trying to have another conversation. So they start talking about, well, who is the greatest? Well, not in this gospel, but in other gospels, it mentions that, well, who's gonna get to sit by Jesus up in heaven? And so they're pulling out their memory cards. And we don't have a lot of information here, but it says they began to get kind of in an argument about what makes a person great. Maybe they're trying to figure out who's the greatest. A bunch of unsung heroes reflecting perhaps on their own self-worth and who might get the privilege of being the greatest to Jesus when they've already had front row seats for three years. This week, they are still avoiding talking about Jesus' death, but they do have energy to talk about who's the greatest. Well, finally, I had been hearing a lot of talk about it, and I finally on Netflix watched the movie Clickbait, and I finally watched the final episode, and oh my gosh, this movie really had me kind of caught up. There's this one lady in the movie who is married to a husband who ignores her. Anybody ever felt ignored? Kind of just not noticed? The marriage is stale. He goes to his garage to work on some train station, even when she tries to engage him. This lady is lonely. She wants her husband to notice her, and he doesn't. There's a new sexy teacher at her college. She has all his information because he trusted her to set up his computer and she creates a profile of him on all these dating sites. And it starts out innocent, but she's lured by finally having someone to pay her some attention. 
It's like a drug and she starts operating on these sites as though she's him, but she's not him. But here's the thing. She began from this basic need of loneliness. Loneliness is real and not just for folks who are single because this lady is married. Don't forget. It's a real emotion for us. Sometimes we don't feel appreciated enough. And like this lady, we just want to be seen and noticed, maybe like the disciples. We want to feel special, maybe not to the whole world, but to someone. The disciples wanted that too, and they linked special with where they were going to sit in heaven. Who is the greatest? What makes a person great? What attributes might you say need to be present? Who are the unsung heroes in your life that have left a forever impression on you? Who has shaped you, molded you, and pointed you in some direction you might not have ever gone? Well, this week I heard some people talking about Patti LaBelle. I happen to like Patti LaBelle, and they weren't saying good things about her. I tried not to get in the conversation. I resisted. I've been trying to teach my son this lesson, that sometimes when the conversation doesn't involve you, just stay out of it. <laughs> but a few decades ago, she shared this story in concert about her sister. You see, Patty had sisters, and all of her sisters died before the age of 45. Patty LaBelle expected that she was going to die. Now she's almost 80 years old. So one of her sisters and her had fallen out, and they weren't talking. Have you ever gotten so mad with someone, you just don't talk to them? Don't act like y'all better than that. You get so mad, you just like, I'm not talking to you. And they got in that fix, that tight conflict where they didn't speak to each other for years. And then one day, Patty says she realized it was silly, and she decided when she came home from the concert, she would go to her sister and make up. But before she got through with that concert, she learned that her sister had died. And she sung this song, these words. It must have been cold living in my shadow to never have sunlight on your face. You were content to let me shine. You always walked one step behind. I was the one with all the glory. You were the one with so much strength. Did you ever know that you're my hero? You're everything I'd like to be. I can climb higher than an eagle. You are the wind beneath my wings. That's what unsung heroes are. They're not the top guy, but they help many of us reach the top. They help many of us climb the stairs. They're often in the shadows, but they're willing to do the work. They're willing to show up and put mulch in their cars. They're willing to do that. Unsung heroes. Well, Jesus finally gets around to the disciples, and it's like kind of like my glasses. I need to go back to the optometrist. And you know how you fall asleep, and you fall asleep on your glasses, and then you need to go back to have them kind of shape them. He gets them straight. Greatness, greatness is about, it's not about where you sit in heaven. But greatness is about serving. Greatness is about welcoming others like you would welcome a child. Greatness is about focusing on the care of others. How many times do we have to hear this? I guess a lot, because we live in a world that gives such a different message. Probably as many times as Jesus needed to remind the disciples of what true greatness is. You want to be great? When you're in a burning tower, help someone out. It's been on our marquee for two months. Help someone up. Want to be great? Work collaboratively with others to build something none of us can build by ourselves. Some of us, it's hard at being a team player. But sometimes we can do so much together as unsung heroes than we can do alone. Want to be great? Share your resources with someone in need. Want to be great? Speak truth to power when nobody is looking. 
Want to be great, see the unseen and the lonely and the person who is starving for just a little bit more attention. There are a lot of lonely people out of in our world. There are a lot of hurting people in our world. There are a lot of needy people in our world. There are a lot of broken people in our world. And some of us are those people. There's one last unsung hero I'd like to mention today. Her name is Osceola McCarty. I remember hearing her story and being touched by this unsung hero. Osceola was conceived by rape. Her mom was walking home down a country Mississippi road and was attacked. She was born in the year of 1908. Osceola's mom did not raise her. She was raised by her grandmother and her aunt. Those three women together would clean houses and cook and do laundry. One day in the sixth grade, her aunt went into the hospital and came back home, and she was unable to work. That was when Osceola had to quit school. Osceola worked hard, and she enjoyed working hard. The harder the work, the more she enjoyed it. She could work for two or three days without stopping. She would use a rub board to scrub clothes. How many of y'all remember the rub board? Okay, three, four, the rest of y'all come on, okay. Y'all are urban people. <laughs> anyway, one day she got a washing machine and she was like, the washing machine doesn't even work as good as the rub board. So she went back to her rub board. A typical day for Osceola, she said, was I would go outside and start a fire under my wash pot. Then I would soak and wash and boil a bundle of clothes. Then I would rub them and wrench them and rub them again and starch them and hang them on the line. After I had all of the clean clothes on the line, I would start on the next batch. I'd wash all day and in the evening, I'd iron until 11 o'clock. I loved this work, the bright fire, wrenching the wet clean cloth, white shirts shining on the line. She worked up until the age of 86 years old. One customer said of her crisp, spented shirts, Ms. McCarty was a walking object lesson that all work can be performed with dignity and infused with quality. These sturdy habits ran together to produce her final secret. Her final secret was that in her bank account over the years, pinching pennies and dollar bills, she had saved $280,000. Well, she didn't want it, and she gave most of it away immediately. She decided to give it to the University of Southern Mississippi to fund scholarships for worthy but needy students seeking the education she never had. When others heard of her story, this unsung hero, 600 men and women in Hattiesburg and beyond made donations that more than tripled her original endowment. Today, the university presents several full tuition McCarty scholarships every year. Unsung hero says, I start each day on my knees saying the Lord's Prayer. Then I get busy about my work. You have to accept God the best way you know how, and then God will show you God's self. And the more you serve God, the more God serves you. Unsung heroes, call to help, call to service, call to hospitality, call to welcome people like you would a child. Amen. <laughs>